Hey guys, once more, Steve here from sellthelper.com and this time I got a really interesting video for you. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. It's an interview I did with a lady who's recently graduated uh, from the Celta course and her name's Helen. She did the course part-time and she also used the online component of the course as well. So she's got lots of interesting tips for you. We did just really a quick interview via Skype. I say quick, the video actually goes on for close to 40 minutes. And I put the questions on the screen. So if you're short of time, you can flick through and just look at the question if you want to go on to the next one. Also, I'll put a link to an MP3 version of this, like a podcast, if you like, if you just want to listen to the audio in the description as well. So if you haven't got time, there's lots of things you can do. and any of the things we talk about in the video there's links to them below if you click the show more button in the description then you'll get them also if you want to subscribe to the channel then you'll get notified of any upcoming videos also click likes like the like button <laughs> rather if you enjoy and uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and i'll do my best to get back to you so without further ado enjoy the interview and i hope you get a lot from it Okay, so we're on. Um, good evening, Helen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good evening, Steve. So just to get things started, um, would you mind telling us uh, about yourself and your background? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Helen. And um, basically, I uh, was a nurse. I was a registered general nurse. And I worked in the health service for nearly 30 years. Okay. And uh, part of my role as a nurse uh, was I was a, a mentor to student nurses. And um, this was where my first love of teaching, um, particularly adults, came from. Because obviously um, we had to teach both theory and, and then in clinical practice. Um, for the last 17 years of my nursing, I was a community nurse. I was a district right. staff nurse. I worked in primary health care. And within that time, I'd also uh, done a floristry course, and I'd managed to do some adult education tutoring um, in floristry. So I'd, I'd also had some um, floristry retail and tutoring experience as well. And then um, in about 2010, I felt that I was becoming quite burnt out with nursing. Um, I'd done it for a number of years and I didn't really feel that there was any other progression for me without becoming some kind of manager that was obviously dealing with more paperwork than, than clinical patients. And I'd had an interest in midwifery, so I embarked on a midwifery course and I managed to do 14 months of that, but it really wasn't for mm. me. I discovered that that wasn't my skill set. It really wasn't going well. And in actual fact, I was looking at myself being a failing student, which was something that was very new to me because I'd always done really well in nursing and I'd been a good nurse. Um, and so I took the decision bravely that rather than carrying on, I would leave midwifery. Um, I'd managed to complete all the theory that I needed to do to pass a PGC in women's health studies, but I could see that that wasn't going for me. So basically I left the NHS. I didn't want to go back to nursing. And I said to myself, it was quite a, a big decision, quite a life-changing decision. What am I good at? What can I do? Well, I can care and I can teach. And so a job came up in a primary school uh, for a teaching assistant, one-to-one -one position, uh, for a child with both special educational needs and also physical um, and nursing needs. Okay. Yeah. Lucky enough, I applied for that job and I was successful in, in obtaining that position. And that was the start of where I am now and um, the start of an absolutely life-changing experience of which I have absolutely no regrets at all so that's essentially my background wow. okay so that's that's amazing to hear so you you actually started te did you say teaching through a floristry course is that right did i yeah, yeah that's okay. right um obviously i was teaching student nurses in a clinical sense within my right. yeah. within my role as a nurse but i actually entered adult education teaching yeah. um floristry and i did that i set up some classes part-time around the nursing and I did that for around about two years. Right. And then I went back more into full-time nursing. And that's when I'd embarked on further education, embarked on a, a diploma of nursing practice. And that's where my academic training at the age of 40 then um, became 
more into my life at that point so yes okay. great so there's, there's lots of things you said there that hopefully we're going to touch on throughout this uh, interview so i'll come back to try and come back to many of them later on so if then if i go on to the the next question then i wanted to ask you really was because obviously you've done the celta course could you tell us about mm -hmm. um so what was it that appealed to you about doing a celta course then yeah um very simply, uh, I mean, I love what I do at school. Um, I've tried to become the best uh, and excellent teaching assistant that I can. But as many people realise, working in a school environment as a teaching assistant, um, there isn't much pro career progression unless you want to actually become a school teacher. And bearing in mind the qualifications I'd got, the life experience I'd got, and also the fact that I didn't want to go back and retrain because I don't actually have a standard degree even though I've got PGC I've got a diploma in nursing practice and then I had to jump from level two diploma to master's level at on my midwifery training to do my um, it was initially a diploma in midwifery but as I said when I dropped out I was able to get a PGC in women's health studies as a result of the units that I'd acquired um, and so basically I felt that I still wanted to progress within the educational setting that I was in and what triggered the CELTA was quite simply that as part of my TA role I was given a remit where I was developing a topic and culture group and that's when I first started to work with children whose English was an additional language and that really kick-started the whole CELTA journey because I then became from my temporary position within the school I then eventually uh, gained another year's temporary position where I did some EAL work mm -hmm. as well as speech and language yeah. work then I was offered a full-time position within the school as an EALTA and then from that, I really thought, um, great, where can this take me? So I'd done some in-house training within the school for a year. I did a, a Norfolk County Council course, which was based purely around EAL. But obviously, again, that wasn't a nationally recognised qualification. And I wanted something that I could take with me outside of the setting if I wanted to and to professionalise what I did. And that's why I wanted to do the CELTA, because I'd researched it as being the best EFL TEFL yeah. qualification with inbuilt nursing, with inbuilt teaching practice, um, and that's why I decided I wanted to do it. Okay, great. So yeah, it's a no interesting story. So then, yeah, I know you've told me, and part of the reason for talking to you this evening is to talk about the the part time course because you did the part time CELTA. Yes. Um, could you tell yes. us really? So what was the main reason for you? doing the part-time course how come you decided on that route yeah um, well essentially I was going to try and do the four-week intensive around summer holidays because I'd initially thought of applying to Bell Cambridge to do the four weeks over the summer holiday as I just said but then I started researching the CELTA and um, one of the pieces of research that I did suggested that the question was um, don't think that the part, the full-time course is the only option you've got. There is a part-time alternative. And I thought, oh, what's this about? So I dug a little bit more. And I realized then, it was the first time I realized that you could actually do a part-time course. So I started researching in my area as to who offered it, the best college that offered it. And basically, the Cambridge Regional College in Cambridge um, offered a part-time what is termed as blended so it's online learning with obviously going to college and doing your teaching practice and your other input session and they offered that over 18 weeks and one of the things that made me realize that I wanted to do a part-time course rather than full-time was because I knew I didn't cope under huge amounts of pressure and strain and I really thought that the four-week intensive program with my psyche and knowing how I was probably wouldn't be for me I thought it was going to be too intense and too much which is why I, I opted for the part-time and also of course um, I needed to fit it in around my work because obviously I was still working you know full-time at the school um, so that's the reason why I chose to do the part-time online course and for me personally I think it was the right decision to do that yeah so you made a sort of a, a, a judgment call self-assessment that yeah. just wasn't for you yeah. oh, that's good so yeah this was yeah and you'd obviously heard about the 
the part the full-time course or the course in general and how intensive people yeah. say it is so okay well that's good and then i excuse me <clears throat> sorry um so now that you've finished the part-time course looking back um do, do you have any insights to share about how it did fit in with your your life in general and your work and all these other aspects yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've made a few little notes about this. I know you're going to go on to say about tips, and I'll, and I'll leave that separately. But, you know, in terms of insight, as far as the part-time course, I would say to any CELTA trainee thinking about doing it, certainly it, it can have advantages if you are working, if you're a, a mature student, if you've got family, um, if you can't necessarily fit in a four-week intensive course. Because having done the part-time course... I don't know how anybody manages the full-time mm. intensive course. I know they do, and I know they do it very, very yeah. well. But we all said on our part-time course, and even the tutors said that the, the full-time course is no easy option, not even for the tutors, and they've been doing it many, many times, and they're yeah. very, very experienced people, obviously. Um, you know, the insight I would say about the part-time course is that it's, it's not, you know, I did a lot of, preparation which i can talk about in a minute and you know i read a lot of testimonials about full and part-time courses and what i would say is this is absolutely true the part-time course is still a very hard option to take particularly because it is over a longer period of time and because you are fitting it in around work and family commitments now for me personally i had a fantastic husband mm. who is retired He's a, a retired um, A and E nurse, um, and you know he was absolutely on board with this 100%. You know, my school would give me a little bit of time off in the afternoon so I could at just least get to Cambridge because it's an hour's drive from here. And going to Cambridge at that time of the evening to get to college for five o'clock, two nights a week, you know, lots of traffic. Okay. So I would leave school about half past two, get home about quarter past three. We'd be in the car at half past three, and literally it became such a military exercise for those five months. Wow. It was actually yeah. quite an incredible experience for both of yeah. us. Um, yeah. So, you know, it required um, a lot of commitment, the part-time course, and it's certainly not an easy option, but it is an option that is doable. Yeah, and uh, I, I know I didn't send this one to you um, in advance, but you're saying about it becoming a bit like a military operation. How long did it take oh, you yes. to get into that schedule? Did you click into it quite quickly or did it need some adjustment? So oh, for the first two weeks, Steve, I can honestly say, and you know how enthusiastic <laughs> I was about yeah, doing CELTA and, yeah. you know, you, you helped me a great deal and no one was more enthusiastic about it, more dedicated to it than I was. But I can honestly say the first two weeks, I absolutely hated it. <laughs> Okay, and that's yeah. what I would say to any CELTA trainee, do not be put off by the first couple of weeks because, you know, I have studied in the past, okay, a few years ago. I am used to studying um, online and, you know, with other courses I've done and in, and in school, but nothing can, can prepare you for the onslaught initially of what CELTA is because you're trying to grapple with the uh, online module, setting up the computer, getting the software installed, just the sheer getting into that routine mm. and mindset of working intensively, which it was uh, nonstop. And for the first two weeks, I thought, what? ever have i done what have i let myself in for i, I cannot wait yeah. for this five months to go I, and i was disappointed i really wanted it to be a great experience right from the start but after the first two weeks of getting into it and having a really good buddy that lived fairly close to right. me i mean yeah. we, we got on really really well together after about three to four weeks we had the half term break in february and i was writing the first assignment something just clicked and i think what it was is when I'd actually done TP1 and did what I thought to be well as the first TP, being quite nervous and passing it. And then I thought, I could not have done this a month ago. And that was a real game changer for me. And suddenly everything started to click into place. Yeah. And I was, I was customizing myself to it and I was getting used to it. And after that, I loved it. It was the most life-changing, game-changing experience I've ever, ever done. And I am so proud to have achieved it and so proud to have stuck with it. But yes, the first two weeks, dreadful. Right, but, so, but you pushed through just, that sort of initial yeah. resistance yeah. and hassle, stress. 
Yeah, I yeah. think that's yeah pretty common, isn't it? I think for me, well, just about everyone doing it. Those first the the start is just so difficult, but then it just mm. does get easier, doesn't it? After a while, you sort of yeah push through. And no amount of preparation, no amount of preparation can can can, can really prepare you for that for that initial bit and that's what i would say to anybody just go with it just go with it and and you will come out the other end um and you will find it gets better well, that actually leads on to the next thing then because i know from conversations with you you did a lot of preparation i think or at least you quite <laughs> too yeah, much okay too much too much so um <laughs> maybe a little slight change on the question I suggested earlier. Could I say then, what do you think was the best or the most helpful preparation you did? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've really thought hard about that because the most helpful preparation I did was certainly going through the 50 pre-course tasks thoroughly. Right. I mean, I had, I had accepted my place. And as you know, I waited a year to do my yeah. CELTA because they only do the online once a year. I was interviewed in the November. I couldn't start in the January because I thought I was going to Kenya because of a, an NGO that I actively support. Actually, as that turned out, that couldn't happen. That didn't happen. But I put the CELTA on hold for, for, for the January of that next year. So I had a whole year. Um, and there were certainly advantages and disadvantages to waiting the whole year. Um, so the most helpful bit of preparation... As I said initially, certainly doing the 50 pre-course tasks slowly and methodically. I mean, I took about four months. Okay, it didn't take four months every night, but I worked on them a little bit at a time over four months. And obviously, you can do it much quicker than that. And certainly, I would have done had the course been shorter in terms of me waiting for it. But I can't overemphasize the fact of doing those 50 pre-course tasks, doing them thoroughly, doing them well, looking around the subject um, and not being frightened by it because the 50 pre-course tasks, you know, you, you won't get it all right. There will be stuff. I mean, I remember going on word stress. I think I talked to you about word stress, didn't I, that I initially found very, very, very yeah. difficult. So doing that, and I think also obviously coming onto a site like yours, Jo Gagonga with her um, uh, um, Salta prep, particularly the grammar ELT training, uh, course yeah. she does, is very, yeah. ELT training is very, very mm. good. And I would say um, just going through basic structures of knowing your verb tenses, a little bit of terminology about the type of grammar that, like your first conditionals and your countable and uncountable nouns, getting yourself a little bit familiar with the kind of English that you're going to be looking at. But obviously, you can't explore every avenue. And certainly, you're absolutely right, Steve, in what you said to me. You know, don't get bogged down in looking at lots and lots of teaching books, mm. you know, buy a couple of books that's on the book list. I bought too many, right. um, being a perfectionist and wanting to cover absolutely <laughs> yeah. every angle. But really, your teaching practice is what you learn on the job doing the CELTA. So I would concentrate on the, 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 the course content, have a look at the syllabus, have a look at your verb tenses, have a look at the basic English that, that's going to be um, surrounding the course, um, and doing those 50 pre-course tasks slowly and methodically and thoroughly mm, great yeah so actually then you've you've hit on a few points from the next question because i was going to say do you have any tips i know you've obviously said about the pre-task taking time with that pushing through yeah. the first couple of weeks or days and um mm. is there anything else you'd suggest for people looking at doing the celta yeah, I mean, I, I wrote down just a few little tips here, which I've, I've written yeah. so I remember them all. Um, I would certainly say within the group, I mean, our group is a great group, but we, we were all, you know, working different places, not in the same location. Most people were in Cambridge. I was the furthest away um, where I was in Downham Market. Um, but fortunately, I think what really helped me over that initial stage, and for my colleague, who will probably vouch for this if she, she listens to this later, um, for her later on in the course, try to buddy up with at least one person that you can connect to right. because that really does help you when you're doing the online modules when you're um you know looking at your work when you're doing the assignments having just one person as a as a support on facebook on messenger how are you getting on oh it's terrible today <laughs> yeah. right how can i help you with getting this software uploaded whatever that really helped um and you know 
I would say find out if you can beforehand about the program that they're offering as far as the online program, you know, the software that they're running. Um, no basic IT skills like how to get your Adobe Flash enabled. I couldn't believe we were all having problems yeah. because for some reason our Adobe Flash wasn't enabled to run the videos, for example. And our Adobe Flash always kept yeah. going off and we'd have I to know enable that screen. it. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah IT skills. Like I said, practicing your verb tenses. And also, I would say, don't over-prepare. You know, if you're, okay, I waited a year, but, you know, if you're waiting, say, six months for, for CELTA, if you get onto it and do your research thoroughly and have a bit of discipline, then really, you know, four to five months should be more than adequate as far as your preparation time. I've mentioned about using other sites. And the other thing is, don't read too many testimonials because that really will frighten the life out of you. Yeah. Read one or two. Yeah, get a bit of grounding as to whether part-time or full-time is the option for you. But don't overread. I think I overread far too much about everything. And then you start getting, two months before the course started, I'll be laying in bed at night thinking, can I do this? Yeah. Oh, can I really, really do this? Maybe I should. Maybe I should get my. Maybe I should just quit now before I even start. You know, you do get that panic that you think. You know, can I really do this? You know, English is not my strongest subject. Yeah. Um, you know, teaching, yeah, great, but English isn't. So you then, you know, if you overthink it and over, research it, you then start panicking. So, so don't do that. Just don't. Um, yeah, get two or three books, um, but don't overbuy lots of books. There is one book I would thoroughly recommend that I've just picked up after doing CELTA, mm -hmm. and I wish I had it before, <laughs> and it's not on any book list. It's called The 25 Rules of Grammar, The Essential Guide to Good English by Joseph Piercy, spelt P-I-E-R-C-Y, and he is an EFL teacher, and he really goes over these rules of grammar that I still struggle with, in a really practical, concise way, and a lot of rules that apply to CELTA, um, such as fewer and less and conditionals and, you know, whether you say who or who's, you know, a really, really good book. And the other one that might not be on your list, which I actually use now for a bit of voluntary teaching that I've managed to acquire, is the 700 Classroom Activities um, a Macmillan book um, and that is Instant Lessons for Busy Teachers and that's a really good useful book particularly if you've got any unassessed teaching practice um, to do I mean one of our our um, course um, participants it, it wasn't for them and so she decided to leave the program yeah. which was quite which was quite rare so we had unassessed teaching practice because we had to fill that gap so we had 40 minutes to fill in spite of all other the teaching so the 700 classroom activities um was another good way of being able to do some teaching practice quick and easy to prepare which was great experience and unassessed which was in some ways quite an advantage um what else have i got don't see the part-time course as an easy option take one day at a time yeah. and the three things i would say succinctly that you need as tips to succeed is focus time management and discipline and that's what i would say to people have those three things and you can do it mm, yeah well all so key aren't they i mean focus time management discipline yeah definitely yeah and it, completely yeah the, i think for me when i remember doing it the biggest one for me the issue i had was time management in that mm. i was getting so worried about it because i'd just done it on the back of my undergraduate degree that i was mm. not that i wasn't spending enough time i was probably allowing myself to spend too much on stuff and staying up late and because trying to perfect this lesson plan and it's just you just can't do it <laughs> it's just not no. it's not the way to go no. you've got to take care of yourself haven't you and time management in my case yep. was poor for allowing myself to yeah spend too much on it so, yeah absolutely and what i would do is like at the weekends when i would be working you know i'd have a cup of tea i'd take the dog for a walk mm. i'd have half an hour off i'd do another half an hour i was very structured i know i ate very yeah. well i got to sleep on time you know once i come back from college it was cocoa and bed you know get up the next day and amazingly 
I don't know, you know, looking back now, I think, how did I do that for five months? Because it was it was over 18 weeks with holidays, you know, Easter and half term. How did I manage to keep going every day like I did? But you find the energy, you find the adrenaline. Yeah. And it was the most amazing experience after I got through that first hurdle. And, yeah, so look after yourself, eat well, eat really healthy you know carbohydrate foods don't just snack out on binge stuff really eat well and sleep and look after yourself and make sure you get out for a bit of exercise clear your head go out for a walk and completely be selfish in that everybody my friends my family all my commitments even on the part-time course they all went on hold yeah. the CELTA was my whole life and everybody else had to come after that yeah. it really did yeah. and that's what got me through it yeah oh great advice yeah for sure that <laughs> i it just feels so yeah. similar to what i remember it being um yeah right that if i i was gonna ask you then also because as you've told me um well how was the CELTA for someone like yourself coming after not studying for several years or having a break from formal education? How did you find it coming back into that? Um, I didn't find it too bad because even though I hadn't been actively studying for six years, um, I found it comparatively easy to get back into the swing of studying again because I enjoy studying and, and I, I'd quite like to be a permanent student if yeah. i could yeah. um you know in some capacity or another I, I love learning so that wasn't too bad I, I think what i would say and that's not to put people off but given the fact that i had worked within uh an english as an additional language environment with the children though obviously that can have some similarities and differences with adults um you know doing the celta you know i admire anybody who hasn't had any efl experience to come and do that course because I think without it I would have struggled more and I can understand you know some of the my colleagues you know did have teaching backgrounds there was a couple that actually taught at the college and you know I, I take my hat off to anybody that comes and does the CELTA course without any teaching background and without any EFL background um, you are given the support and you do adjust um, but, you know, it is not easy. And I think people need to give themselves a little bit of slack and a little bit of allowance if they haven't got um, a, you know EFL background, because it is a very different form of teaching. And you know, I've worked for adult education. And as I said, you know, I've got two colleagues that were you know teachers and they still found it stressful. So what I'd say to any CELTA trainees, if you don't have that experience, you know, don't feel that. Um, you know you're failing in any way if you're struggling because you will get used to it and you know i think it is a tall order if you haven't got one or both of those requirements to do celta because it is very very specialized yeah. form yeah. of teaching um so yeah that's how i feel about that um generally yeah because i know I, yeah, I, I um did it after doing a languages degree so i did french and mm. spanish for my undergraduate and then I'd yeah. also done a module of what was called TESOL in, at my right. final year university. So I, I right. had, and in that module, we only had like 20 minutes of observed teaching in the whole year. But even then, that just gave me that little background. And it's still, mm. so it was still terrifying. <laughs> but not, yeah. you know, yeah. in, in a good way. I mean, it's very challenging. But just having mm. that background helped a lot. But for someone coming in completely yeah. from zero, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, tip my hat absolutely. to them for sure. That's a great achievement to come through. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I have read it within the testimonials that I read. You know, housewife feeling that she wanted a new career, did the the, the TEFL, you know, did a did a, a CELTA and managed quite well. So it mm. is possible because obviously you've got in, incredibly experienced trainers, um, completely committed to to the program, um, and you know you do get that support, you do get that help, and they do understand that you may not have come from a an English background or a teaching background. So you know I wouldn't put people off if they haven't got um, neither, um, but 
all I'm saying is, is that, yes, you know, to have some experience in teaching and to have some experience, even voluntary before yeah. you start CELTA, you know, even go and getting yourself uh, like I'm doing now, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with a, a local church community volunteering in a language class. You know, I would probably say anybody, you know, if you can get any kind of experience yeah. and exposure with people uh, with English as an additional language, that is going to be an advantage. Yeah, that's that's a good point because i know in my mm. local area there's lots of voluntary groups that are crying out for people to help offering maybe yeah. some kind of informal english language teaching so that's a great way to start yeah. isn't it to say yeah. yeah yeah it is absolutely brilliant okay um last one then i didn't i didn't send this through to you i'm just thinking of it as we go really uh since doing the celta then have you um got any had any progress or any projects to share that you've been doing since then that you'd like to share with us or yeah um uh, there was um i can certainly answer that and then i probably just uh, would like to say um because you did ask me also um to sort of say what the overall advantage and disadvantages of doing an online oh, blended sorry program if I missed that one. Was. yeah yeah um, Go for it. but um no i'll answer your question first um i mean yeah uh, okay, you know me. I'm I'm not um I'm not a young kid on the block. Um, I, as you know, uh, basically going abroad um isn't an option for me as far as working. I've got an 89 year old elderly blind father yeah. that needs me. I've got a daughter that's just married. So you know, going and actually teaching abroad as a contract um wasn't going to be something that I could do. Though I would like to volunteer at some point, even on one of these short-term programs for volunteers where you could go out and, and get some experience. I do feel that, you know, have you haven't got the CELTA, you know, that's what I would say is, you know, you put in this tremendous effort to do the CELTA and you just think, I've put all this hard work in. I want to make it pay. I want to do something with this experience that I've got. Um, you come away with that passionate feeling. I haven't done all this hard work for mm. nothing. I'm going to use mm -hmm. this. This. Yeah. I'm going to use this training. So for me, um, initially, what I'm doing is, as I said, I'm volunteering at the moment. I'm still working at the school. Um, volunteering at the moment with a language class that's run through a local church. I've just started that, um, and that's um, yeah, that's going pretty well. Um, I've managed to do a little bit of lesson prep, and you know, just to get myself out there for a bit of confidence and practice. Um, the other thing I'm also doing, because um, I have a speech and language element to my job at the school, and I, I, I did initially start looking at applying for just adult ed jobs, you know, emailing, just finding out what was out there. Um, didn't really have much luck, to be honest, um, in terms of finding many jobs, one of which um, I think we talked about. I thought, well, that's too many hours. I don't know if I can take mm -hmm. something yeah. like that on. And I didn't have quite all the qualifications that the college wanted, so I was slightly hesitant. Um, but what I am now doing is um, I sat up one day and thought that's what I'm going to do um, I went and did some more training through Future Learn through Cambridge Regional College they put me they tagged me into uh, what was being offered um, I did some uh, more training in the summer holidays just a quick online course which was about online tutoring okay um, how, how to become your own online tutor and essentially what I'm trying to do Steve for the beginning of next year is I'm trying to use all my nursing background and all my nursing skills yeah. and I'm trying to set up my own little freelance business actually supporting healthcare professionals who want to work within the health service or in primary care whose English is isn't their first language so I'm trying to build a business around supporting people um, applying for jobs conversational English mm -hmm. interview English CV writing and English support to help healthcare professionals gain employment um, within the health service or within the private sector. So I'm trying to use the CELTA and my nursing background and combine the two. So that's essentially what I am in the process of um, planning uh, with a website and going on some business training. So that's a big leap for me. Yeah. And I know yeah. I wouldn't have done it without me having done the CELTA and realizing that I took that risk as far as doing the course. It paid off. I passed. I was really proud of myself for doing it and passing it. And now I feel I've got enough in me to say, well, I risked that. 
now let's see if I can risk something else and try and branch out and stretch myself in a way that I've never done before. So that's essentially what I'm up to. Great. Okay. So when you've got some updates on that, then you have to come back to us and tell us how you're getting on. Yeah. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, that'd be great. So cross. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. Combining those two experiences yeah. or the your experience mm-hmm. from different fields and your passions. Yeah. Sounds like a winning combination yeah. and a very very useful and valuable thing to do so good luck that sounds yes great. yeah so so this is this is this is what i'm hoping to do and and that will offer a niche market for you know um you know in terms of yeah yeah in terms of i think what will be my strength uh or my strengths as far as the again you know the, the teaching background as far as the nursing but also having all that experience within within the healthcare role so hopefully i can offer something in that line to, to people brilliant yeah i've also got um, um somebody within my class um she's a sri lankan pediatric nurse who, who now lives over in the uk and so i've got my first free client if you like you know i'm going to do this as a um, what I believe they call a minimal viable product. Obviously, I don't see her as a product, yeah. but I see her as somebody that I can use my my skills. I've, I've told her exactly who I am and what I'm doing. Um, I'm offering her free advice and support so she can give me the feedback on my product and my service. I can help her, but she can also help me find out what she needs in order to be able to become uh, a practicing healthcare professional um, with the English support that she's needing to do her role um, and that is that she's a paediatric nurse from, from Sri Lanka so I'm really excited about working with this person so I have got one client that I'm hopefully you know lined up for me that I can work with and learn from which obviously you know something that we're all doing post CELTA we're all still learning and mm. growing because I see that CELTA a bit like and I'm sure you agree with me it's like passing your driving test you've got the driving license but now you have to go out in the car and learn to yeah. drive <laughs> and i think that's what celta gives you doesn't it you've got the ticket but now you need the experience and that's what i'm now wanting to gain you know you don't know everything you don't know it all in fact you realize how much you don't know but you've got enough to be able to say okay i can take this i can run with it and i can grow with it and that's what i'm hoping to do oh, brilliant now i look forward to hearing a lot more from you on that so that's great yeah. okay well i I'm, i don't want to take any more of your time so i just want to say a big thank you for sharing all your uh, tips motivation inside insight everything with all the people here on sell to helper and uh, i'm sure they'll be very appreciative and yeah yeah maybe we'll do a follow-up in a few months or years and see what's happening yeah and all i would say just to round it off um is just to say the, you know the online course there are lots of advantages you know you can fit it in around your time you do get a chance to reflect and feedback a bit more you know it can fit in with your life you know it can be done around distance learning um it, you know it can be done over a long period of time i mean i know there is a seven week blended course now that cambridge regional offers obviously the disadvantages of it being is that yes okay you haven't got live input going on you're having to work on your own so you have to be disciplined and organized and be able to work by yourself but obviously there are lots of group activities that you do as well online mm. as you know within your group which is really good and you get feedback on that um and um so i would say you know look at what the celta would do for you and make it fit around your personality your learning styles your learning needs and around your life and you know there is there is something out there whether it's blended online shortened course something can fit in with what with what you can do so you know, don't be put off by that. There, there are lots of different options and discuss it with your college. Discuss maybe the best option if they offer both, if they offer the online course and the intensive. Some colleges do. So, you know, discuss with your tutors your individual needs at interview and think to yourself what is going to be the best way. Because at the end of the day, at interview, they will pick you, as you know, for somebody that they think is going to pass the course and you want to pass the course and they want you to pass the course. So you can discuss with them the best options for you and to be completely honest about what you can and, and can't do as far as stress and intensive pressure, which obviously is what CELTA is ultimately at the end of the day. But what a fantastic 
thing you can say you've done at the end of it so it's hard but the reward is there and yeah the best thing i ever did so thank you very much steve and thank you once again for all the help that you gave me beforehand i thoroughly recommend seltohelper.com <laughs> fantastic um and yeah what more can i say but thanks well, thank you very much great nice talking to you helen okay bye 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 okay so there you have it that concludes uh, the interview with Helen and talking about the part-time course and the online aspects. Hope that you got a lot of valuable information from it. I know it was really good fun for me to do it, to find out about it, especially how Helen was coming back to studying after a long time out. Um, if you found something particularly useful, leave a comment now and say what it was and why. Or if you have any questions, do the same. Leave a comment with a question and we'll get back to you. And remember, if you want more of these videos, click the subscribe button, even better, click the little bell notification so you get notified of when any other videos are coming up. If you want any other tips on the CELTA course, check out CELTAHelper.com for the blog where I try to post you know, every month at least with valuable articles and insights. So uh, anything else you, you've got for me or any questions, just leave them in the comments and uh, yeah, as I said, I'll get back to you. So thanks again. Hope it was useful and talk to you soon. Bye.